Good morning. Again, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope that all of you are well, and we're just about ready to start our service for the morning. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and let us be glad in it. If your heart is as mine, let us bow our heads just for a moment of prayer. Eternal truth, we give you thanks for this beautiful day, one that you have made. We thank you for the joy that comes in knowing your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to worship you, to praise you, and to magnify your holy name. We only beseech that thou would be with us as we attempt to worship you. Hear our prayers, O Lord. Respond to the call of our proclamation. Father, we confess that we need you at this time in our lives more than any other time in the history of the world. We need you to rescue us not only from every evil, but, but sometimes from ourselves. We ask that you would consecrate us, mold and make us after thine own will. For thou art the potter and we are the clay. And so we rejoice that we feel the warmth of your presence with us right now. And so let us shout for joy. Let us sing to the power of God come down. Let the proclamation of your word go out. That men and women, boys and girls may be saved. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Savior. Amen and amen. And our opening song for the morning is How Great is Our God.
Amen. There are two passages of scripture for your listening pleasure this morning. And our first lesson is taken from Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter, and verses 1 through 12. And then the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 28th chapter, and verses 16 to 20. And that is the text from which we shall attempt to preach from this morning. Let us now reason together in Ecclesiastes, the 7th chapter, 1 through 12. Listen for the word of God to speak unto you. A good reputation is better than expensive perfume. And the day you die is better than the day you're born. It is better to go to a home where there is mourning than to one to where there is a party. Because the living should always remind themselves that death is waiting for us all. Sorrow is better than laughter. It may sadden your face, but it sharpens your understanding. Someone who is always thinking about happiness is a fool. A wise person thinks about death. It is better to have wise people reprimand you than to have stupid people sing your praises. When a fool laughs, it is like thorns crackling in a fire. It doesn't mean a thing. You may be wise, but if you cheat someone, you are acting like a fool. If you take a bribe, you ruin your character. The end of something is better than its beginning. Patience is better than pride. Keep your temper under control. It is foolish to harbor a grudge. Never ask, oh, why were things so much better in the old days? It's not an intelligent question. Everyone who lives ought to be wise. It is as good as receiving an inheritance and will give you as much security as money can. Wisdom keep you safe. This is the advantage of knowledge. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be unto God. And again, the whole church said, Amen. Let us now turn to the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter, and verses 16 through 20, again, listen for the word of the Lord to speak unto you. The 11 disciples went to the hill in Galilee where Jesus told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, even though some of them doubted. Jesus drew near and said unto them, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore into all nations and make them my disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And lo, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be unto God. And again, the whole church said, Amen. Amen. And certainly we want to have just a uh, few announcements and then uh, we'll have our altar call. Uh, we certainly want to wish those who are having birthdays in this month uh, a very happy birthday, uh, and we certainly pray that you have many more. We're also uh, grateful that our Sunday school is still taking place and that we 
have uh, dedicated and diligent uh, members who are dedicated to uh, serving God and proclaiming his word. And we're grateful to each of you. Uh, also, uh, we want to encourage each of you to uh, get your vaccine. I certainly don't advocate getting the Johnson & Johnson, but certainly get a vaccine, Pfizer or Moderna, and um, that uh, uh, you may be inoculated against this uh, COVID-19. Amen. And the sooner that that happens, the sooner we can all be uh, together again. Amen. Uh, my way of, of prayer, certainly we want to be in prayer for all of those persons who are on our sick list, the Newsom family, Sister Virgie Thomas, Sister Hoagie, and Sister Giles and Weesey, uh, Sister Clark and Monkey, uh, Sister McLean and Sister Fennel and her family, and Brother Solomon and his family, Jill and Bill Meitzer, Sister Fitzgerald and Mary Davis, amen, and uh, uh, Sister Irma Davis. And certainly we want to pray for the Wright family. I was glad to talk with Brother Wright this week, amen, and uh, he's doing better. And uh, thanks be to the prayers of all of you, uh, uh, God is with him. Amen. We pray for Sister Tate and Brother Griffin and Brother Foster family, uh, Sister Green White and Sister Carrie uh, 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 Short. Amen. And the Reed family and uh, Sister Sarah Long, we always keep you in our prayers. Amen. And if you know of others who stand in the need of prayer, we ask that you would certainly get them to us that we may pray for them. Sister Sonia, we're always praying for you, uh, and uh, we uh, lift you up before God. Amen. Also, we want to pray for unity, solidarity, and love for all people in our nation. Our hearts are heavy. Our grief is deep, our tears are flowing like the rivers of Jordan. It was heart-wrenching to hear about the killing of Duante White, a young man, I think 19 or 20 years old, who was shot by Officer Kim Potter, uh, and she announced that she was drawing a taser, but yet it was a nine millimeter and he was shot one time and died. Much violence has taken place. There's much grief, but we pray for the Wright family that they may heal from the hurt and injustice they have received. We also pray for Adam Toledo, 13 year old boy who was unarmed, shot and killed by police in Chicago as he raised his hands with nothing in them. We pray for that family. We pray for unity throughout this nation. While these tragic things have happened, fresh salt in the wound from the George Ford killing. It's ironic that all of this is happening as the trial has ended and now the jury will deliberate on a verdict. We pray for calmness. We pray for peace for all persons. If your heart is as mine, let us bow our heads in prayer. 
O oh God, our Father, we come to you as broken pieces. We come to you as an empty pitcher before a full fountain. Our hearts are broken. Our hearts are empty because of what we have witnessed and what we have seen happen in this great nation. Black lives have been taken by those who are supposed to protect us. Help us to understand these acts that we cannot understand. Help us to love in the midst of hatred. Give us peace in this time of trouble. We ask that you would touch the hearts of the Wright family, of the Toledo family, and the Floyd family. Let them know that you are God and that you are still on the throne. Vengeance and justice is yours. Help us to know that your eye is still on the sparrow and you watch over all of your children. Reassure us of your love and care for all mankind. And then, Father, help us to walk together, to sing together, to learn together, to love together, and to know that regardless of our race, color, or creed, that we are your children, red or yellow, black or white, we're all precious in your sight. Father, we pray for those who are on the sick list. We pray for healing right now. We pray for recovery. We pray, oh God, that you would strengthen us, that we may be able to run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Now, Lord, speak to us this morning in your service. Fill us again with your Holy Spirit. Restore the joy of your salvation. Give us that hope in the midst of a world of despair. We solicit your peace in this troubled time. We know that you are able. We know that you have the power. And so right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare it done. We accept it. That what you have done for others, you will also do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And now our hymn of preparation. Uh, I believe that I'm going to be ready. Amen. I say a prayer every night. Whatever I do, I'll get it right. With no regret, no guilt or shame this time. No, not this time. Once I surrender, I won't dare look back. Cause if I do, I'll get off track. Move ahead in faith and patiently await your answer.
Church, say amen. And let us say amen again. There is a word from the Lord. The eleven disciples went to the hill in Galilee as Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, even though some doubted. Jesus drew near to them and said unto them, I have been given all authority in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore into all nations and make them my disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them all that I have commanded you, and lo, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be unto God. And again, the whole church said, Amen. The subject that we shall endeavor to use this morning with God's help and with your prayers, never alone. Never 
alone. As it is our custom, I invite each of you to look at your loved ones, your neighbor, hopefully is there, and let's say it together. Come on. Never alone. Two words, one more time. Come on. Never alone. Ain't that good news? Never alone. You're not alone. I'm not alone. We are never alone. Today marks the day that Queen Elizabeth laid to rest her husband, Prince Philip, whom she had been married to for 73 years. And she sat in St. George's Chapel in a pew by herself. For the first time in her life, it appeared that she was alone. For 73 years, her husband had always been by her side. And so as she sat there in St. George's Chapel alone, the hearts of millions were broken just seeing her sit there by herself. But in my mind, Queen Elizabeth was not alone. For I believe that God was sitting on the right side of her. And I believe that the spirit of her husband, Philip, was on the other side. And each were saying to her, never alone. You are never alone. And with that, I believe that she was assured peace in a moment of sadness. She was assured hope in the midst of despair. She was assured that there would be joy even in sorrow. Never alone. In the text this morning, Jesus shares his final promises to his disciples and he made three promises one he assured them of his power I have been given all authority of heaven and earth in other words Jesus was saying since I died on the cross of Calvary and was put in a borrowed tomb I rose because death couldn't keep me in the ground. And in my resurrection, I now have all power over heaven and earth. Grave, where is thy victory? Death, where is thy sting? And then secondly, Jesus gave them a commission. Go into all the world, make people my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The commission that Jesus gave to his disciples is the same commission that he gives to you and me today. Be my witness, go tell somebody that I rose from the grave. And then thirdly, Jesus assured them of his presence. Wherever you go, Jesus told the disciples, I'll be with you. 
I'll stand by you. I'll be around you. I'll be on the side of you. I'll be underneath. I'll be on top of you. Wherever you go, I'll be there with you. Yes, I got a great joy out of this text because Jesus assured his two disciples that, 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 that you are never alone. In other words, you will never walk alone. Wherever you are, I will be there with you. And I believe that same Jesus who assured the disciples that he would be with them and that they would never walk along. That same Jesus assures you and me this morning that, 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 that we are never alone, that he would walk with us, he would talk with us and tell us that we are his own. And so whatever situation you're going through, whatever your circumstance, whatever condition you find yourself in. Know this morning that you are never, ever alone. The Lord is with us. Oh, isn't that good to know? That Jesus is with us. Apostle Paul said, if God be for us, who shall be against us? Aren't you glad that the Lord is with you? Amen. You're not going through it by yourself. And not only that, the Lord will see us through. Children, whatever you are experiencing right now, God is going to see you through. Look at, look at your family member. Look at your neighbor. Tell them God is going to see us through. Amen, amen. I don't know how I'm going to get through this on my own. Amen. I don't know what the end is going to be. Amen. I don't even know how I got in this situation, but I'm assured this morning that I'm not alone because God is going to see me through. He's already brought us through this, and he's brought us through that. He'll see the Lord doesn't get us into something, allow us to get in something that he's not able to take us out of. Amen. And then the Lord will provide for you. Amen. He always has a ram in the bush. Is that right? And what I'm glad about is that the Lord has the resources to provide for us. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all of they that dwell in it. Whatever you need, the Lord, God's got it. He's got everything. We need. And then the Lord will take care of you. I want you to hear that this morning. Whatever it is, God going to take care of it. Is that right? Amen. It doesn't matter what the doctor said, God will take care of you. Amen. It doesn't matter what the nurse said. God will take care of you. It doesn't matter what the doctor, it doesn't matter what the, uh, the lawyer say. It doesn't matter what the judge say. It doesn't matter what the bill collect. God will take care of you through everything along the way. God will take care of you. Never alone. In the text, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Joanna, had gone to the tomb. and They did not find the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so as they left the tomb, an angel of the Lord appeared to them and said, I know who you're looking for, but he's not here. He has risen. Remember that he told you to go and tell the disciples to meet him in Galilee. Matter of fact, he's gone to Galilee ahead of you. Now note that the women, Mary, Mary Magdalene and Joanna, they thought they were walking along to the tomb. They thought they were leaving the tomb by themselves. They thought that they were grieving and crying 
and, and, and weeping and wailing by themselves. They thought that their heart was broken. They thought that they were the only ones in it, that they were just walking through this by themselves. But suddenly, <laughs> Jesus appeared unto them. Amen. I say, suddenly he appeared unto them. And see, that lets you know that the Lord will show up. Amen. How many believe that he'll show up? He'll show up in the midst of your trials and your tribulation. He'll show up when your head is bowed and your heart is heavy laden. He shows up, amen, when you're confused and don't know which way to turn. The Lord will show up and you are never, ever alone. Has he showed up for you? Huh? When you needed him? Didn't the Lord show up? And when he shows up, he'll show up. Never alone. And so while they were talking, the angels and these three women, Jesus appeared among them. They tried to hold him. They tried to, 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 to caress him. But Jesus said unto them, go tell my disciples to meet me in Galilee. Amen. And so the women got in a hurry and, 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 and they went to find the disciples. Amen. And when they caught up with the disciples, they, they, they told the 11 disciples, they said, Jesus is alive. He's not dead. Jesus has risen from the grave. And, and, and he, amen, amen. And, and, and you know, they, and they said, we have met the Lord on the road. And you know, that's a mighty good testimony to tell somebody that you met the Lord. Am I right about it? Amen. In other words, they're saying, we met him. Amen. And so we have seen him and we know him. We tried him for ourselves and we found out that he's all right. Amen. That's a mighty good testimony to be able to tell somebody, I met the Lord. Amen. And it doesn't matter who you are. When you meet Jesus, your life will never, ever be the same again. I met the Lord. You ought to tell somebody, amen. I was a wine old, but I met the Lord. <laughs> he made a difference in my life. I was a drug addict. I was a five-star general for the devil, but I met the Lord and he made a difference in my life. Picked me up and turned me around. Placed my feet on solid ground. They told the disciples, we met the Lord. He's alive. He's well. And the disciples got in a hurry to go see Jesus. And I believe this morning somebody ought to get in a hurry to go see Jesus. Isn't that right? And the Bible says that when the disciples got to Galilee and when they saw Jesus, he said they worshiped him. And you know, uh, it's good to meet the Lord and then to worship him. Amen. Matter of fact, when you come in the presence of Jesus, you can't help but bow down and worship him. Am I right about it? Because Jesus, he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to tell him thank you. Amen. He's worthy to be lifted up. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, that I will draw all men on somebody or to help me lift Jesus. You ought not be ashamed, amen, to give the Lord praise. Am I right about it? They worshiped him. And see, in your worship, amen, you ought to have a song to sing. In your worship, you ought to have a prayer to pray. In your worship, you ought to have a word to proclaim. In your worship, you ought to have joy and shouting in your feet. I'm talking about when you worship the Lord. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. And every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Oh, somebody ought to worship the Lord this morning. Amen. Somebody ought to praise him because he's worthy to be praised. I'm glad that the psalmist taught me how to praise. Enter his gate with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. 
Praise him with the tambourine. Praise him with the harp. Praise him with the lyre. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Somebody ought to praise him. When praises go up, blessings come down. And so they worship the Lord. And then Jesus told them, listen, fellas, I've been given authority over all of heaven and earth. My death and resurrection gave me authority. Yes, yes, I rose, and if you don't believe me, you can touch my hands. You can look at my feet and see the holes in them. You can look at my side and put your hands in it. Amen, amen. I am he. I'm not, a, I'm not a ghost, amen. A ghost does not have flesh and blood as I have, amen. I am the one who once was dead, but now I'm alive again. I'll walk with you. I'll talk with you. I'll tell you that you are my own. And so as they worship Jesus, he told them, I have authority over heaven and earth. And then the second thing he told them that he says, therefore go to all nations and make disciples, make them my disciples. In other words, the Christian is called upon to make disciples for Jesus Christ. In other words, we ought to tell somebody, amen, that the Lord can and will save you. All you have to do is say, Lord, I need you to come into my life. I'm a sinner, come and make me whole again. Forgive me of all of my sins. And if you pray that prayer, amen, before the Lord, I believe that he will make your life brand new. I believe that he will save you at that very moment. Go make disciples of all men. And then he says, teach them all that I have commanded you. Amen. Jesus has commanded us to teach people about him. Go tell somebody that Jesus is the answer to the world's problem and to every human need. Go teach somebody and tell them that we must love one another as Christ has loved us for greater love is no man than to lay down his life for a friend. Go teach somebody the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. Go tell somebody to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with thy God. Go and, and teach them all that I have commanded you. Teach them that greater love is no man and to lay down his life for a friend. And then Jesus finally told them, when you go and do these things, I want you to remember that, Lord, <laughs> I'll be with you even to the end of the ages. Amen. And when you're on your mission for the Lord, isn't it good to know that, that God is with you? You're not out there preaching by yourself. Amen. You're not out there singing by yourself. You're not out there praying by yourself. The Lord is with you. Amen. He said, Lo, I'll be with you even until the end of the ages. And I don't know about you, church, but I'm glad that the Lord is with me. He's with us in the midst of our troubles. And I heard the psalmist say one day, he's a very present help in a time of trouble. And I don't know about you, but in this time, amen, we need the Lord more than any other time in the world, amen. We are living in troubled time, but I'm glad that we serve a God whose peace in the midst of a dangerous valley. Yes, yes, yes. And then I'm glad that we're never alone. He's there in the midst of our sorrows when our head is bowed and our hearts are heavy laden. And when it seems like the weight of the world is on our shoulder, the Lord is with us. We are never alone. 
when you go in that operating room, you're not by yourself. When you are struggling to understand that young man, that young woman who has gone astray, you're not by yourself. When you're struggling financially, when you're struggling, amen, with, 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 with feelings uh, uh, of joy and pain, you're not by yourself. The Lord is with us. And so today I say to each of you, never alone. You don't have to worry. We are never alone because the Lord Jesus Christ rest rule and abide with us. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your presence. That you're always there with us to lead us and to guide us in the right direction. You're there to heal us. You dare to fill us full of love, hope, peace, and joy. We thank you that we are never alone. We thank you that whatever we walk through in this life, whether it be sickness, grief, and sadness, we know that you are there. We thank you for your power and your presence. We thank you for the commission that you have given to all of us to make disciples of all men. In Jesus Christ, we pray, amen and amen. And now let us receive the benediction. And now to the only wise God who is able to keep us from falling, his majesty and dominion, be with us now, henceforth and forevermore. Let us go forth and let all the church say, never alone. Yes, so